the problem with the UK media is if you're over 50, probably more so over 60, you're still in a position of power or you've risen to a well-rewarded role in the UK media, by which I mean either you're lucky enough to have a, a big show on a big station or you've got a column in a newspaper or you've got an executive role, then then you are probably sending your children to a fee-paying school. So that's why I think conversations about private education and the Labour plan to uh, strip them of their charitable status, which, which means that the fees would have to include VAT, I suspect it might be a lot more fascinating to the upper echelons of the media class than it is to the country as a whole. But unfortunately, I'm a member of the upper echelons of the media class, and I find it absolutely fascinating. So we're probably going to have a look at that story later. I would remind you, though, that very often it's the people who tell you that if you can't afford to feed your children, this is why it's relevant to the Ricketts story, if you can't afford to feed your children, it's time you got a better job, turn out to be exactly the same people who say, if you can't afford to send your children to private school, you need a government-funded tax break on, on, your, on your school fees. I, I can't, sometimes I envy the, the, the more hard-of-thinking right-wingers because life, life must seem so simple. You, you, you're sort of 30p Lee. And that lot. If you can't, well, you can't. Don't need food banks. Get a better job. You can eat for thirty p. And then the private education story comes along, and they're on the side of parents demanding that we have state-funded subsidies for people at private. So I don't know. We'll have a look. The, the, there's a headline in the Telegraph today that reads thus: Labour's private school tax plan will force out forty thousand pupils. And there is a headline in The Guardian today which reports on exactly the same research from exactly the same organisation, the Institute for Fiscal Studies, which is a think tank, but it's one that discloses all its funding. So once again, we find ourselves recognising the need for a different description for the ones that are completely transparent uh, as opposed to the ones that are completely opaque. But the headline in The Guardian looking at exactly the same research Ending private school tax breaks would raise one and a half billion pounds for state sector, think tank says. It also finds that there would be a relatively limited effect on pupil numbers. Um, some very, I mean, if you got the world's tiniest violin out for landlords in the last hour, getting the world's tiniest violin out for people who won't be able to afford the school fees anymore as a consequence of this policy is 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 not going to be much of a stretch, is it? I like this conversation for two reasons. Number one, I'm fascinated by private education. I, I'm a beneficiary of it and I am a user of it. If, if I think of all the things that my late father might come back and haunt me about if I didn't um, pay for my children to have the best possible education that they could ever have, then dad would be there like uh, Marley's ghost in A Christmas Carol. But I also recognise the fundamental unfairness at the, at the very heart of the issue. And that's what I want to have a conversation about. 40,000 uh, people, it doesn't sound like a lot. One and a half billion quid for the state sector does, does sound like a lot. You'll get the anecdotal stories about, oh, I, when I was... When I when I well, tell you what, when I was at public school, my look when I was at public school, my parents probably shouldn't have sent me there financially speaking, especially because my dad sadly lost his job on the Daily Telegraph in my final year there, so they never had that period of uh, good income without the outgoing of the school fees. Uh, and certainly, if I'd had any power over it or I had any ability to travel in time and redress the balance I'd, I'd, I'd have left I'd have come out if I'd known but I didn't and that's what they wanted and it's not it's not for me to um, retrospectively judge on that but the but the reality of people who are going without fancy holidays or new cars it's real to us it's it, I mean it must sound so ridiculous to everybody else when you're looking at people spending tens of thousands of pounds on sending their children to private school and then claiming that they're not well off or they're not wealthy, it must be, it must be close to hilarious, right, for you? Because I mean it when I say my parents made enormous sacrifices to send me to that school because they did. They made enormous sacrifices relative to our reality. So, you know, it, 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 other friends we had who didn't send their children to, to, to posh schools would have had better cars than dad ever had and they'd have gone on better holidays and they probably had a bigger house. So they did make sacrifices. But the idea that they are somehow relevant to people who could never dream 
of paying school fees, it is just ridiculous. And, 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 and what I want to stress, because I don't want this to be an unkind conversation, I just want to stress that when you hear people saying stuff like that, well, when I was there, there'd be some parents turned up on a pogo stick because they couldn't afford a car. Th th these people do mean it. They're perhaps a little bit blinkered or, 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 or a little bit ignorant, a little bit lacking in empathy, incapable of imagining what it would sound like to open up your newspaper or turn on your radio when you're thinking like the caller we had earlier when they've just entered skint week, which is the bit of the week where the money's run out before the month has run out and therefore you're going to be feeding the kids stuff that you'd much rather not be feeding them. And then you turn on your radio and you hear me suggesting that they need, that, that you there with the turkey twizzlers, you should be feeling sorry for that person over there who may no longer be able to afford to send their children to private school. You are so far away from worrying about what you're going to feed the kids or how you're going to pay the electricity bill at the end of the month that it just is it's a very british condition this it's very class based it's a consequence i suspect of hugely disproportionate right wing media and i used to be part of the problem i, I want to make that categorically clear I, I used to be part of the problem because my parents made genuine sacrifices according to their reality my mum went without things she would have loved to have had so that i could go to the school that i went to but I can't ask you to feel sorry for her latter day equivalent who may end up being among the 40,000 pupils that now get squeezed out of private school because of the because of the removal of charitable status. I think it's ridiculous.